marvelous Mayo Day, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Phantom Mayonnaise. Marvelous Mayo Day. Let me know if that sounds good. I know everybody loves an alliteration, but uh, the key to it is a good alliteration. So I'm not really sure if that falls in the category, but I don't waste too much time with introductions because we're talking about a band that uh, I want to get tattooed on me at this point, which is saying a lot because, you know, the last six bands, well, five bands, uh, we've talked about. Uh, I, I love unconditionally, so this is really saying a lot about this one. Um, I am wearing their shirt as well. We're bringing back the shirts. I, uh, you know, last video was Chili Peppers. Uh, I had a Chili Peppers shirt. I bought at the show I was at, and it was uh, basically it shrunk when I washed it, so I, don't, I got rid of it. Today, Grateful Dead. I have probably worn like four shirts of theirs in these videos. Uh, this one is new. I uh, just recently started uh, teaching guitar here in Utah, and I uh, basically needed something that was kid appropriate. And uh, you know, chili peppers, or not chili peppers, I'm sorry. Uh, the Grateful Dead are like skull and rose oriented. And uh, well, I didn't really think that was very kid appropriate. So here I am wearing Grateful Dead with the Dancing Bears, uh, who uh, is inspired by the guy who basically made a bunch of acid and uh, supported them um, financially, uh, uh, audio. We, that's not a word. Um, and I mean, Owsley Stanley is his name. I could have gotten that mixed up. It's been a while. Anyways, Grateful Dead, we're here to talk about them. Uh, Spencer and I have obviously done a video on Go to Heaven, and uh, feel free to go check that out. But I wanted uh, to give a video um, on the Grateful Dead uh, because. You know, the last six videos of my music journey have all accumulated to this point. Um, and that's me right now. And who do I love right now? Well, that is the Grateful Dead. And I have been on a kick of theirs for two and a half years, I believe. It was five years ago when I saw Dead and Company with John Mayer for the first time at the Gorge in Washington. Um, and before that was like my first real big introduction where I really fell in love with them. And it has just gone like out of control at this point. I can't stop buying Grateful Dead stuff and I can't stop listening to them. And I uh, now love the Jerry Garcia band, uh, specifically the May 20th, 1990 live album as uh, like my favorite album of all time. And I, 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 yeah, I mean, that song is like, or that album is just eons ahead of any, like my next favorite album. I love it. But, uh, why I want to get into the Grateful Dead. So how I got into them, um, I was, you know, at that moment, I had been listening to a bunch of funk, P-Funk, Red Hot Chili Peppers, and throughout, you know, learning guitar, there are so many videos on YouTube of, well, you know, here's how to play the Mixolydian scale. And we're basically going to use Jerry Garcia as our inspiration for it because he loves the Mixolydian scale. Or here's how to play Grateful Dead song. And I go and turn on Grateful Dead and I just, I just didn't get it. it. I just was like, yeah, it's okay. Well, here I am deep in the funk and uh you know i'm like old greg level of deep in the funk and i hear it's dead and companies i think their first show they did on tour which is at madison square garden and i think they opened up their show with shake down street and i'm listening in my room i lived in my parents house at the time and i was listening to it i think on like this old dinosaur pc and it was so funky I was like, this is awesome. Just so awesome, so funky. Just kind of like the, like that stink face funky, which is weird because like, if you go and listen to it and you maybe turn on like kind of a funky P-Funk song, you're like, well, really? Like, is it? But hell yeah, it was. 
Um, and that was my deep, like the beginning of the end for me into the Grateful Dead. So I go see him live with my buddy Steve Scott at the Gores, Dead and Company. I hear so many great songs that I fell in love with. Uh, Brown Eyed Women, which is one of my all time favorite songs by them. Unfortunately, they don't have a studio recording, but fortunately, uh, their live recordings are way better than any other studio recording. So um, I have like 10 versions of like every Grateful Dead song because each one as a live performance speaks to you differently. And uh, to get into how this affected me musically, Jerry's guitar playing is in, and, and this is like, you know, for people who aren't a Dead fan, or uh, this might be like sacrilege, but his uh, guitar playing is like just so incredibly unique and far ahead of everybody else. Um, you know, we've talked about Jimi Hendrix, we've talked about John Frusciante, um, and then, you know, we've talked about like P-Funk had Eddie Hazel, but a lot of that was just, here's the pentatonic scale. And that is the first guitar scale you learn when it comes to writing solos. Jerry's guitar playing is, we are going to accentuate chords, we are going to accentuate the chord tones, we are going to connect chords, and we are going to play in ways that are just so emotional. I have never heard a guitarist be able to really put so much emotion into a song as well as Jerry does. Um, I mean, the only other, you know, artist or guitarist I can say who really has been able to do it, um, maybe two, uh, would be Jimmy, Jimi Hendrix and John Mayer. Um, and I mean, Jerry just is, is like a prophet up on stage. And I know that's just like, I'm falling into that like dead thing uh, of just the dead heads where they prophesize Jerry. Um, and I don't want to, but like, I mean, the man just knows how to talk to you with the guitar. And so for me personally, learning how to do this, I mean, Jerry taught me modes. He taught me Mixolydian, Dorian, Ionian, Aeolian, and you're like, what the hell is that? If you're not a guitarist, it's, it sounds like I'm just making up words. Um, and I, I mean, yeah, and so that's a whole weird subject. I've kind of dabbled with the idea of doing some guitar videos on here. We'll see about that. Um, but Jerry taught me how to do that. He taught me how to make, or when you are soloing, how to focusing or how to focus on the chords that are playing. It is, you know, we're not playing to play. It's we, or to hear ourselves first. We are playing to, uh, like, bring out what everybody else is playing and make it pop. And I love that. I absolutely love that. Um, and that can be really weird to hear, but like, you know, Jerry is following the chords. He's following what the rest of the band is playing and he makes the rest of the band sound better. Um, and so I love that. And then, you know, you have the, the songwriting of Robert Hunter, Jerry Garcia, uh, Bob Weir and his artist or his lyricist. I can't remember what his name is off the top of my head. That's gonna bug me. I'm sorry, buddy. I can picture your face. Then we have Brent Midland as well, who brought a bunch of songs who I've already said is, you know, I love Brent Midland. Um, his voice, his piano playing, his songs that he brought in, I love them. Um, and, you know, the Grateful Dead encapsulated what I had really was introduced with P-Funk, and that's storytelling. Grateful Dead do that to a whole new level. Here's a song about Casey Jones. Here's a song about a guy whose dad sells whiskey to stay alive after their mom and, and the wife died. Here's a song about, you know, just a, a girl who likes the blues. Here's a song about a prostitute. And the Grateful Dead just do, do things that at the time I didn't think were possible. And even to this day, learning Grateful Dead songs, they do things I didn't think were possible. Learning guitar, you're like, okay, most songs are one, four, five, six chord progression. Um, you know, you'll have a alternative rock song which has a major third chord in there. 
Grateful Dead is like, oh, we're going to change keys. We're gonna have a major second chord, a major third chord, a fourth, and then we're gonna have a flat or a minor fourth, and then we're gonna change keys again. And it just, it, it blows my mind. And it, to me, it completely erased what I thought I knew about songwriting. And like in a way has kind of destroyed my songwriting capabilities because I have like, I will try and write a song or something along those lines. And I'm like, wow, I don't know what I'm doing because everything that I've known is just like been completely started over. And uh, so yeah, that's musically, they have just been the biggest influence on me lately. Um, my guitar playing has just been straight Grateful Dead inspired, Jerry Garcia inspired. It has been when I show up to band practice, this is what I, you know, for, to play with people. It is, well, I'm gonna apply what I've learned from through the Grateful Dead and Jerry Garcia's playing. And I can just relate so many things to them. Um, yeah, I, I absolutely love the Dead. And personally, you know, they came at a time when they, as an adult, I'm, I'm getting older. I'm stepping into a very long-term relationship. I'm stepping into new jobs. I stepped into moving out of my parents' house. I, you know, I'm stepping into these new shoes of adulthood and, you know, needed, you know, a big change in my life. I was no longer this punk funk California Chili Peppers listener. I, you know, was looking for something, not, I don't think I was looking. Like, truthfully, I don't think I was looking. Uh, but their music came to me at a moment when it was perfect, when it seemed to fit everything that I needed to. It was just like a puzzle piece in my life that I needed. And they have just a song for everything, a song for every emotion, for every story. And I, one of my favorite things that the Grateful Dead truly just like preach in their songs, especially the Jerry Garcia band. Jerry is all about songs that life is hard, but you know, don't give up. And I mean, you go listen to that May 20th, 1990 Jerry Garcia band live album and every single song is like that. Yeah, life is, is gonna have its downs, but it also has its ups. You know, go listen to Touch of Grey. You know, that came out right after Jerry had his diabetic coma and was basically nearly dead. And he was reborn with this re-energized spirit. And that, you know, every band before this is just enjoy life. And then we come to this band who is not afraid to say, yeah, life sucks. But that doesn't mean you can't be happy and, and make the most and and be able to laugh at it. You know, I mean, Jerry's favorite like movie is Frankenstein and it's a guy brought back to life. And that was before Jerry was brought back to life from a coma. And so I, you know, I just love these guys. They're just continually reminding me that every day is is new is is a rebirth into your life and and you know you may not be able to control big things but you can control your outlook and my favorite part about jerry or grateful dead songs is they're happy you can have albums full of happy songs and that's that's something that's so hard to do for artists is just accept a happy song write a happy song it's such a hard thing to do and i love it you know life is life is short so be happy you know at the end of the day whether or not you're dying or going back to bed you want to have a good day you want to have a day that you were happy and the grateful dead their music their uh their artists their musicians that are in that band are they live that they absolutely live, make the most out of life. And that is why I've had them on repeat and haven't taken them off. You know, when I'm driving, when I'm listening to music, when I'm at work, I mean, it, they're always playing in my life. I'm, whenever I pick up a guitar, I'm playing Grateful Dead. 
and they're just such a special band to me and where I am in my life currently. Uh, it, it's kind of weird, you know, over these seven videos, I can see exactly how I have spun right into the Grateful Dead. Um, they have rock, they have blues, they have funk, easy listening, disco, reggae, uh, they have everything that I've always looked for. It is the, they're not, they're multi-genre, they are multi-meaning, you know, they have just something for everything. So yeah, I love them. Um, hopefully you enjoyed the series. Hopefully uh, you enjoyed listening to me babble on about artists that I love. Um, hopefully you enjoyed my musical journey and uh, maybe I've given you some a reason to go listen to an artist or revisit an artist um, or you know even think back to an artist that you listened to 10, 20 years ago. Um, so yeah, hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, like I said, I'll try and make a couple more music videos, uh, some guilty pleasures, some, uh, what was the other one? Some new artists that I love. Um, like I said, let me know if you want to hear some guitar videos. I love playing guitar. I love the musical theory aspect of things that I've, uh, dove deep into. Um, so yeah, let me know, uh, let me know, uh, again, what got you into the Grateful Dead. If you like them, if you don't, um, let me know your musical journey and uh, go check out the rest of our videos. Go check out Spencer's and uh, have a great rest of your day. Have a good mythical Mayo Day. That was an alliteration. Magical Mayo Day. I already said miraculous. Uh, a mesmerizing Mayo Day. Running out of M's here. That's what I got. Have a good one, guys.